morning everyone welcome to this uh, curiously titled uh, talk it's called the talk at design system or how i learned to stop worrying and remove the chaos after the after a lot of uh, talk about an experience about magic this, this talk is going to be a little bit uh, short in the arm of reality uh, okay so uh, i'm going to repeat the question how many designers do we have here can you just raise your hand Uh, and how many devs do we have? A lot. <laughs> okay. Uh, designers, have you ever been in a situation where you design something, you give it to the devs, you saw the coded version or product version, it was very different from what you had done. Just say yes. So, awesome. And devs, have you ever been in a situation where you received everything and you were like, this does not make sense. Why, why are there three different buttons with this uh, shade of same blue? Does that happen? Then you can also say yes. Just give me a yes. Okay. So this is not a unique problem. I'm, I'm glad it's not just my company. Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, in product and service company, when you're working together on multiple functions, it also often happens that uh, people are at for uh, the on the ownership of the actual deliverables to the client or you do whoever like everyone is putting things in that direction uh, without a clear communication between the team the design system the talk is going to be about uh, my learning or my learning and how building a system that kind of helps solve these type of problems uh, but uh, the experience has been that so far in team, everyone is fighting for uh, the control of uh, uh, the overall processes. It's like we, we are in our own game of thrones. We are fighting for them. So uh, the title of the talk is uh, due to a film called Dr. Strange Love, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. The reason for this debut is uh, this movie had a, a backdrop of uh, Cold War between uh, US and uh, Russia, and uh, I think similar cold wars exist in companies between devs, testers, and uh, designers. So this uh, title made a lot of sense to kind of refer to that cold war. Like I was saying, it's as if we are in our own Game of Thrones. Uh, some are out of Lannister, out of Stark, and our managers or uh, White Walkers. So, uh, to give you a brief intro, my name is Sages. I've been designing for uh, various roles for about uh, 10 years now. And uh, I do a lot of things. Some uh, of uh, you might recognize a company called Uncommon, based out of, uh, uh, based out of Bangalore. I was one of the co founders there. I also work, uh, uh, also teach uh, or mentor your students. So uh, let me jump right in. Uh, have, how many of you have a huge design system or a variation of it in your work? Few people. So I, I would assume a lot of you are interested in design systems but have not used it, right? Uh, so what are design systems? When we talk about design systems, when you can use uh, Google for design systems and you will see it's lots and lots of products. Uh, which are like uh, ready-made designs. You can just buy them, download them, start using those systems to create your products. But what are design systems? We talk about design systems. What is it? Uh, design systems is documentation or uh, laying down of foundation principles that you can use to build your product. It's not just something. It's not just in your component library, it's not your React uh, it's in React or not so it's in SPSS, it's not so library. The foundation of a design system is the principles that you create in order to kind of build the entire product. It involves a lot of other things than just component things. Because uh, it forces you to think of the product in terms of a whole, then screen by screen and component by component. So it is very important to 
how to make a task for or a castle out of those lego so uh, just to see some of the uh, some of the ingredients of the design system first and foremost like i mentioned the core principles of the product what problem you are trying to solve with the product and more importantly what is your user experience take on it so it's not just uh, saying okay uh, uh, you need to use the uh, uh, 12 column grid or something it's how actually you are approaching the problem solving in the uh, in the problem for example so this is uh, might not be very reasonable but there's a uh, something that i'm recently working on and for the product design these are some of the foundational rules that we are coming up with in the user journey so uh, for example uh how do we come up with very logical default for all the uh, options for the drop down or all the configurations in the product right so these type of things in part of a user journey in building the product is uh those principles become part of the design system so everyone else all the other team members not only uh, other designers but other developers can also think from this perspective how we are making this for the user and at the more component or more uh, uh, craft level or uh, of you might have seen this this is from material design how they define some of their core principles like they are using visually they are using material as a metaphor uh, uh, their aim is to make uh, their app very bold graphic and intense and they use a lot of motion to provide uh, feedback and different ways to communicate a lot of things so uh content is one of the key part of uh, design we think uh, into language that we use in our product images illustrations and to do a lot of other media here uh, first voice and tone so uh, even if a product is uh, uh, mostly media something like instagram uh, or youtube there is a lot of messages a uh, lot of text uh, and labels uh, in textual form so uh, product is a lot of textual communication in your design system you can define how you what is the tone of all those messages what tone you need to be talk to your user uh, whether your messages need to be very concise or you want to make them a little bit elaborate uh, whether you want to use humor as a, a way to talk to the, to the user or if it's an enterprise uh, app you want to you want to be very straight forward uh, the last point is very important Uh, especially in today's time, is inclusive. How your uh, messages in your text make everyone feel included uh, in your product. So, uh, to take an example, use of pronouns. Normally, we use historically uh, we only use he for any third person, right? but how you actually move from there to include uh, other genders and non-fluid. Uh, Gender also. So those are the things that are very important when you are defining your product uh, content strategy. Uh, this is an example from uh, Neil Singh, who, the, who did very early work uh, in uh, uh, voice and tone of their uh, product, and uh, I, so I I really recommend uh, reading their uh, paper. Next is images. So how many of you started using internet very early, like uh, late 90s, early 2000s? You see images like this on the uh, uh, website. So, like if a service company was based out of Bangalore or Hyderabad or Ahmedabad, any day, you would still put up an image like this. See that it is very common. Uh, it was it was because it was a, a lack of awareness. So, they didn't know that you could be you could put pictures of uh, people of uh, other colors or other species or other genders. There was lack of resources. There were no resources online to find pictures uh, which represented people uh, like us. Like, uh, we, we were very white at that time, not to be offensive or anything. But uh, so you can define in your uh, design system 
how you are doing in the interviewing business. What your business strategy should be. Uh, you want to be inclusive, you want to be very generous in your cases. Uh, and some more technical stuff is what in a size of resolution you need to cover. So why are we talking about content? I mean, if you are designers and developers, it's not really our job to talk and define content, right? If someone sitting in the HR or marketing or legal who does that, why why us? Why why us we to talk about it? So A first answer is the cliche one, which is content is the thing and we all saw the content. But more important the uh, thing to me is that uh, when you work on content with other team members or people in other departments, it gives a shared ownership of the product and the strategy. Not only that, uh, it helps you break down the ecosystem. You all work uh, uh, with people who are like us. Designers work with designers, sales work with sales. You don't even know who those people in digital or marketing are. If we work on this together, break, uh, break down that ecosystem and have a more diverse, have more diverse opinion on the product and its sales. Typography, uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, interfaces are still text. In typography plays a huge role into not only uh, being legible and uh, uh, communicating the text, but also to communicate the tone, the mood, the values of your product. So, uh, typefaces is the text. So, uh, typefaces, or uh, selection is uh, typefaces, which can fall back to how legible they are, uh, how accessible they are, uh, acceptance sizes, what mood, uh, mood they want to be. You want a playful type. You want something serious, you want something that's a little bit of work on. And scale. We have to scale to choose the type factors to uh, uh, fulfill this goal. So, uh, I work with a company with a company called Web Engage in the uh, uh, out of Mumbai. I work on the design company. And when we start to explore the choices of type, there has been an enterprise uh, app. So, we started to look at a few work for type. Arial and Antarctica, they have always been there. We also looked at uh, San Francisco and Roboto, uh, which are the two main uh, native typeface. We compared them and uh, kind of decided on uh, Roboto was a good choice, but when we saw the product uh, using Roboto at multiple weights, kind of slow down the website completely. We went with a font stack which looks like this. Some of you might have used this, uh, but all this does is it uses the system font. The system font is even much better. So we went with this and established the typographic hierarchy to uh, use it. Colors. Again, colors, you go back to your brand, what your brand wants to display. Uh, so a lot of times color palette would already be decided uh, by the brand. How you take that uh, and then test for different things, different combinations. Like you come up with color palette from that. This is the primary color palette that we use for the uh, language. But not only that, as designers, you also have to uh, uh, design, how to combine different colors so that they fulfill the requirements for accessibility. People who don't have a strong uh, vision as the uh, most of it, but a lot of people do fall on the uh, on the of visibility that they have some problem uh, detecting colors. And so uh, you, we establish a secondary color palette using neutral colors because this app uses a lot of uh, uh, data visualization. So we use a fictively neutral uh, or rather photos of nature that have derived color palette out of that and also associated, associated the scene with motion, most of state in the so this was our secondary palette and how it went on a spectrum. Uh, grid and structure. So you can define uh, if you want to do the grid like a 12 or 16 column. Or if your app demands or your product demands, you can simply do away with the grid. There are ways to design without grid or go with a hybrid grid. Uh, you can also define how your uh, uh, product responds to uh, Inside the response this. and uh, for your typography and audio elements, you can define something like something called vertical rhythm. 
so uh, for example if uh, those of you who have used materials we use a, a baseline of four pixels so every component and a multiple of uh, multiple of four you can uh, that helps in that creating a very easy to follow rhythm so uh, this is an example from ibm carbon design system and how uh, the grid system responds to green side and another example is uh, for uh, uh, a typography sets on a uh, uh, vertical base component sheet i am guessing that a lot of you have used component sheet so you have like uh, uh, use component library component drop down into field uh, navigation component sheets are the most uh, popular form of design system and lot of times component uh, this component libraries are sold as design because hey here's uh, html css of everything is a design system. but they are just part of the whole uh, not very whole uh, it involves uh, defining the, all the elements and components and how they are related with each other how they are structured it is more tag uh, adding marking border color etc and the behavior how they behave under different uh, browser or uh, app state when they are active how are uh, and state like how, how when a user is interacting with a, a composite component or a, or a component for the first time how what sort of information they should get what they should get when they are using this uh, uh, there is no data to so different state like this example is from shopify's color uh, they have a really good design so to summarize the design system is made of the core principles of your product uh, the content the content set uh, grid typography colors the component library if you if your app uses a product uses a lot of data visualization you can define those in uh, the system uh, icons you can define your iconography if you have motion design uh, you can define those those as well so why we need this okay, let's say you are, you have very cordial uh, relations with all the team your work just flows smoothly you still need design system what does what, what will it solve what problem will it solve i would say yes because uh, what we have noticed uh, from a uh, couple of examples is that there are other benefits of using system, the design system which is just simple First, communication. Using design system makes the communication very easy between teams. So uh, you can establish rules at the outset, kind of share it with the entire team, and then communicate using the same terms and same language. So it becomes very easy for people to refer to different. Also, when you are designing, uh, when you are developing, developer, uh, you know when you receive. Uh, Screen or new clothes or something that there are not going to be any surprises. There won't be fifty shades of uh, the same button anymore because it will be hopefully be picked by from the same repository that you have already established. Similarly for testers, you don't have to repeatedly test the same thing because it's tested and certified once. Now you are just combining it into a different configuration. So uh, it eliminates all the surprises and these type of constraints. When you already have an established system in the repository, it makes life easy for everyone. So this is an example from a product called Intercom, and uh, this is uh, the doesn't fit very well. But on the right uh, left is the definition of a uh, component called conversation. How they are using the same in uh, a sketch file or in their design uh, uh, deliverable. Then they have a four components called uh, conversation not only that the same uh, uh, phrases or the same terminology is used on the help docs as well for the end user so starting from product definition to your end user you are using you are talking in the same language it means you have very happy designers devs and testers translated into happy users when you have this type of synergy in your team it goes very well to your transfers to your users as well scalability uh having a uh, already established design system makes it very easy to scale your product 
uh, at webengage especially they saw that uh, uh, they, they didn't have to create new components or anything uh, for almost a year and which meant they could wireframe something to start working on uh, the design the visual putting them together the visual design and production immediately from there it uh, it uh, created a very lower turnaround time from coming up with a low fidelity concept to production and it means money when you can scale things fast move things fast to be in uh, concept to production it it saves a lot of money for the company uh, it makes sharing the knowledge very easy not only between designers but in the entire team and your outputs are consistent because two designers are now, now not coming up with their own version of uh, the same design right if you have ever worked with earlier if you have ever worked uh, in team with multiple designers one designer will give you something but the other one will have something slightly different you don't know which one to trust which source to trust that kind of inconsistency is taken care of a uh, cross functional team can see the rationale behind the design decisions from your documents because uh, design is often seen as something where you only see the mock ups you don't know why and how those mock ups mock ups were made right? so when you rationalize your design process in terms of principles and uh, a system then it makes design less of a black box and everyone can see what is happening how certain decisions were made it makes uh, it very easy for the new team members to start becoming productive you already have something the new designers uh, and team members can look look at the existing patterns start working on it immediately they have a uh, very quicker ramp up they don't have to learn everything from scratch uh, scratch on their own so you have happy news in the office uh response to external changes uh information architects is a firm based out of japan and several other places and they are very huge in uh, uh, product uh, design and dev they did a research for one of their apps and they came up with this number 14290 android devices in the market which means a huge spectrum of uh, screen sizes right and that's not it because now you have different device types as well you have everything from watches to uh, vr glasses to tv sets where you can use uh, uh, different products it is very hard to design and test across this entire spectrum of uh, uh, screen sizes what you can do in the design system is you can define how your uh, uh, content uh, responds and your product responds to this type of screen size changes and then test at certain break breakdown points so this example is from uh, material design how something that shows up in one way on uh, uh, larger screens kind of change ship uh, shifts uh, uh, its shape into smaller screens so you have you can solve for the inter uh, for the whole range of uh, devices concurrent design is now you have one source of truth you have one repository multiple team members can start working together not only that you can have multiple teams working on the, the, uh, multiple modules different modules uh, with a certainty that their output will be consistent and in accordance with uh, what's already been established so uh, you have uh, five new features or modules to design you can still uh, happily feel that okay the, it will it will add up to the coherent uh, design of the product so people working together is uh, one of the huge benefits Uh, a cure for imposter wellness how many of you here know what uh, imposter syndrome is so imposter syndrome is when you feel like you are just a hack you are just putting together things without any skills or anything and uh, uh, you 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 are not competent at all when you uh, start rationalizing your design decisions in form of a document and principles you start feeling better about yourself as a designer as a developer whatever uh, your role is you start to feel that no you are actually competent because now you can see the rationalization behind all of your decision some of the stuff you have internalized you just immediately make decisions but when you actually write those down you see that there was some logic behind it it makes you feel happy about yourself which is i think very important quality for any work to have so here are some of the uh, 
uh, I'm just summarizing all the benefits again. It improved communication, scalability, makes it easy to share knowledge between people. Uh, you can define your responsiveness of the product. You, multiple teams can design together and it cures imposter syndrome. Uh, design system and its implementation is not without its challenges. It's again like uh, in earlier talk we saw, it's not a silver bullet. It won't solve problems that are uh, because of uh, the product's culture or team culture or team dynamics, that's for sure. But what are some other challenges? First one is uh, you need time and resources to create a design system and then to maintain it. Because every time you come up with a new pattern uh, of solving something and a new way of solving something, you have to go back and document it in your existing system. And also creating a system upfront takes up its own time. Right? So th there is some additional overhead work that require, that's required to uh, uh, create and maintain them. Top level buy-in. It's very hard if you haven't, uh, if you don't start with a design system, it's very hard to convince your top level to uh, agree to kind of move into this direction because for them it means additional time and resources which uh, no one really wants to put in because again this uh, design systems promise you future uh, uh, benefit right and long term gains but you can easily trade it for uh, some immediate like you can just uh, easily design and develop a, a couple of new features then why go for a design system. Until very recently, there were, the tools were not sophisticated enough to create or design uh, a system. Right? This is getting slightly better now because uh, there are tools like uh, Sketch. Li Sketch has libraries. Uh, Figma is already like, has a big built-in library as we will see today. Uh, and uh, uh, there are other tools also like UXPin. Uh, there is also version controlling av available for designers now called Abstract. So uh, this is becoming better, although the products are not there yet, uh, it's still better than what it was say a year ago. Uh, here's an example of one of the design systems I have made for a company called WebEngage. It's just, just to show you the kind of, uh, uh, depending on different context, how you can, what you can actually make part of your uh, system and deliverable. Because this was going to be used by other designers, I kind of, uh, this is a little more verbose in how different uh, components are stacked, how they are actually made, what are their actual spe uh, uh, specifications and different states uh, and different variations of them. Uh, I hope this will be better if you see the uh, uh, on, a, on a laptop. But uh, uh, And then I, I just have one variation of uh, in, uh, application of design system to show. For a company called Wallet Buddy, they are based out of uh, uh, the parent company is based out of Bangalore. Uh, we made a vanilla design system, which then they can adapt to uh, create multiple very different products. So here's the vanilla design. Uh, vanilla. Uh, here's a screen using vanilla design system, which is very plain and very straightforward. Now changing some of the variables of the same uh, system, like typography, a little bit of grid. Uh, and uh, moving to brand colors for a particular client, we could come up with this, which is not entirely different, but there is a discernible difference to sell it uh, to a different client who is aware that this is what we are getting. So it's not as if we are cheating them, uh, selling the same product to five people, but uh, we can make discernible differences uh, into multiple products. And uh, this is something. Uh, um, company called Vox who runs uh, uh, close to like many many I, I can't even count but they are the company behind Verge or uh, Polygon uh, Vox.com right they have a similar design system where they just change certain variables to contextualize it for a particular website or publication but everything is at the core born out of the same system so this is a very uh, primary uh, application of similar concept. So if you put them side by side, on the right is the vanilla version, on the left is the uh, improved version, which for some reason is the reverse order of uh, how I should have shown it. <laughs> anyway, so here are a few examples in the wild of design system. Uh, I am not going to read through all of them, you will see the presentation, you will get a link to the presentation at the end. But Salesforce, MailChimp, uh, Atlassian, Google who started the whole uh, uh, documentation thing. Uh, 
uh, design systems have become so popular now that they have their own libraries. Uh, sorry, rather, uh, they have their own galleries. So when when anything in design has a gallery, you know that the thing has arrived. Uh, so uh, I want to leave you all with a question of if you are not using design systems in what format, in what uh, scope, you can start using it uh, when you go back. Uh, and then uh, you will have your own stories to tell about how they helped you, whether they helped you or not, whether it was an overhead which didn't really lead to any place. You can maybe start very small and then take it from there. But uh, I would really be interested in seeing how you actually uh, start implementing it. That's my talk. I have time for questions now. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, do we have any questions here? Yep. We have a question. Uh, 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 it was a nice uh, session. Thank you. Uh, I recently had a chance to work on a product where uh, there was not uh, any design system in place and the UX designer has a hard time to convince you know stakeholders mm -hmm. and to come up with each screen mm -hmm. so uh, who uh, owns the ownership of creating this design system in place before starting uh, development it exactly you know it resets on also only on UX designer or uh, any other stakeholders involved in that you know, including product manager or yeah. uh, so uh, it depends from one product to another. Uh, I would say the bare minimum people who should be involved in design in the discussion of design system: a your designers, b your devs, uh, the product uh, manager or rather manager because they need to know what's happening and how their resources are working on. Just to be in that know, I would ideally want uh, other people like other departments to also be involved. It depends on your product, but if you have a product that goes out to like really huge uh, uh, audience and uh, at a level where legal and uh, marketing and HR and uh, even you have might have a content team all of those are involved in your product they all should become part of the design system at one level or another at one deliverable or another probably they won't uh, a content person won't be as necessary to be part of the component design right but they are definitely part of how the content what the content should be your content strategy and the, I personally feel the goal of the design system is to make it transparent for everyone in the company, not only designers and devs. They are the immediate beneficiaries, but in the end, the way you implement it, it goes everywhere. Like we saw in the case of Intercom, right? Their help documents uh, use the same phrases, same conversation, same, uh, uh, all the same terms and phrases, right? So they are also at some point involved uh, or touched by the design system. So, uh, it's very easy to contextualize this, uh, which is the beauty of this. I mean, you don't have to follow one uh, specific rule of how to create and who the audience should be and who should be the stakeholders. Designers and devs should definitely be involved, but you can involve other parties. In, uh, in the beginning, you had like four or five uh, typefaces, right? And then you said that you picked robot. So, can you just talk about what sort of parameters or how do you go about evaluating different typefaces and yeah. why you pick Roboto? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, so we ended up not, ended up not really picking Roboto. Uh, and, uh, but, so for this particular product, it's a B2B product and uh, uh, used by enterprise. So it's not really a consumer product where, uh, and we didn't have a lot of uh, mood to add to the product the product we didn't want to make the product with a personality right uh, for example and i'll give you an example you uh, use something like say mail gym it has its own mascot and it's targeted at uh, uh, really individuals so uh, someone running a small shop they would use mail gym to send out emailers and newsletters web engage was uh, not targeted for that their, their target audience is larger companies so they wanted to take as neutral a tone as possible, which meant uh, our typefaces from the outset needed to be uh, uh, very simple, no, with no additional personality or flair of its own. Right? We started, so we thought, okay, 
what are if we didn't want to use a paid typeface because the product goes out to like a huge audience right what are our options that's where we started okay arial and uh, helvetica because they have always been there uh, what is the next freely available but really popular and really work for type of uh, typeface which was roboto and san francisco because we have started to see that uh, it is possible to use native fonts now in uh, mac every mac comes with a san francisco pre installed it is easy to refer to it from css that was our starting point to narrow down to four from that arial and helvetica we didn't want to use because we wanted a slightly modern feel to the app uh, roboto we ended up not using because including it kind of slowed down the app uh, i i'll just show you the that sc uh, screen again if can okay so you can see like when we uh, saw it some of the uh, uh, weight variations we needed right the load time became very slow which meant that for a product which is already built with a lot of javascript adding this one more which uh, even in the beginning tells you that it's going to slow things down we didn't want to go with it and then the benefit to between i mean the variation between roboto and san francisco the apple font was not very much so the what we ended up using this what this does is if you are an uh, on an apple uh, laptop it will use san francisco if not it will move to the next one so any google uh, phone or uh, chrome uh, chromebook or anything will get roboto if you are on windows machine you will get the windows native uh, font which this additionally did was it gives a very native feel to the web application also you feel like you are using something that's built into it so that was our goal that was the process how we decided on uh, like picked the few first runners and then kind of narrowed down to our final choices that is not it uh, so i was i don't know if i mentioned but a uh, design system is always a living document right you go back and you make changes after testing for some time now uh, web engage has realized that uh, the visually there are some inconsistencies they want to fix uh, right so we might have to pick a typeface and we are looking at something called inter uh, which is a variation of roboto but it has a few additional features right which we can just enable in the css so we are now looking at that so it's always a iterative process the uh, decisions here are also not final 